Hey y'all, this is Amanda and welcome back to my Tech to Zone 8A garden. And today we are in the backyard for part two of my May garden tour. So my garden has definitely grown to the point where I've had to start dividing up my garden tours or else you're going to just have an hour and a half garden tour. And truthfully, most people don't have that much time to sit down and watch an entire garden tour like that. So this is part two, all in the backyard. And I'm actually really excited because I feel like I kind of rush through the end of a garden tour. It's because I'm tired and because I feel like the video is getting too long. So it's really nice because today I'm going to have the opportunity to take a little bit longer, show you all more varieties of cut flowers flowers in the back garden and that is what I really focus on in the back garden cut flowers and a few vegetables along the way okay so this is one of my original cut flower gardens right here and most everything in this garden is reseed it reseeds itself each year one of the prominent plants you're probably seeing right here is a chocolate dara which I'll have Jeff come up close to kind of show you guys some close-ups of these. It reseeds itself every year. These are an excellent cut flower. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful shades of burgundies, mauves, pinks, whites. Absolutely gorgeous. It's a very fun, whimsical plant. Below it, I've got some Uptown Girl um, Phlox, which is a perennial that comes back every year for me. Now, this area has been struggling a little bit. I'm not sure what the deal is, but if you scan back a little bit, you can see several of them aren't doing very well. We've had plenty of rain. They've had plenty of water. So I'm not sure what the overall issue is. I did have one Dara beside it that was really struggling. However, when I got closer to this Dara, I did notice a chrysalis in here and i'll get jeff to show you the chrysalis in here i was about to pull this up and i saw this guy hanging out on it so i decided to leave it there but yeah he is just chilling right there looking really good but I've got plenty of other Dara, and I know this isn't attractive, but I decided to leave it. And then also through this area, and I think it might be easier if Jeff comes where I am, but you can see a wide variety of zinnias starting to come up in reds, pinks, kind of lilac, lavender colors, paler pinks. All of these reseed themselves each year, and I really kind of enjoy just letting this bed kind of do its own thing. Oh, that was a bunny. A bunny took off. We've been noticing bunnies in the gardens. I'm a little nervous about that. <laughs> We've kind of joked about, hey, we don't want those bunnies here. I hope they're not eating all my stuff. So far, we haven't really seen that much damage, but I'm going to keep an eye on it. But also within this garden, I get a lot of lemon basil reseeding itself. And that is this particular plant coming up right here. i got to get the zinnia out of the way. I get a lot of lemon basil coming up, reseed itself. I like to utilize this as um, a foliage for my arrangements. Now back here, you kind of see like these almost palm-like um, structures back here, plants. These are a particular variety of sunflower. I think they're Maximilian sunflower. They will grow almost eight feet tall. They do, uh, sit, they're perennial plants. They do send out runners. And so I do pull up the runners. The runners are very easy to maintain. Um, but these are really fun and they'll kind of grow up tall. One of the things I'm wanting to do is I'm actually wanting to start some tithonia and some um, mammoth sunflowers in this garden too, towards the back. I I'd really like them to get really, really tall and add some really fun whimsical height in this area. Okay, so I did have some 
Flox. I believe this is Flox. It's come back from last year. I think it's like sugar or something. I'll look it up. But it's this beautiful kind of purple white Flox that reseeded itself. So that's kind of fun. Beside it is an additional Flox called David's Flox, which is supposed to put on white blooms. And it's doing pretty well as well. Now, that was one of the ones I got from Bluestone Perennials. I also planted over here from Bluestone Perennials a Boltonia Snowbank. It has not put on much growth. Maybe it needs to be a little cooler. We'll see. The Canterbury Bells are getting done with their blooming season. They were absolutely beautiful. So fun and whimsical. I like to start Canterbury Bells in like July or August. Then plant their, I start them by seed inside, plant their seedlings out in the fall, overwinter them, and then I have spring blooms, which works really, really good. Now, a lot of this green that you see here was all foxglove, which are absolutely beautiful. They're the Dalmatian peach. They did beautifully this year. I've already gone ahead and cut back the stems. I didn't want it to produce any more seeds in this area. I just really want them to focus on roots because they are perennial for me. And then it looks like I've had a few... I believe this guy is a scabiosa pop-up over here. So I do have some areas back here that I need to go ahead and reseed with some additional summer flowers, most likely marigolds, sunflowers, zinnias, those type of things, which will look nice. Now, I did grow the blue bachelor's buttons this year. They've done beautifully. I've done a terrible job harvesting them. In fact, I haven't harvested one <laughs> yet, but they're looking really nice. I've really just enjoyed letting them go this year. I would like for them to drop and reseed themselves for next year. That's why I haven't really messed with them all that much because I would like to have more of these plants next year. Okay, so the Larkspur are pretty much done this year. I managed to get the deep blue, the white, and some of the pink. I have a lot of volunteer Cosmos that are pe peaking up in these areas. This one particular variety is called Zenzia. Um, it's kind of a medium purple. Here's a more open one right here, bloom, which is beautiful. And then I do have some white cupcakes that have been coming back. The white cupcakes haven't seemed as strong. I do think I need to do some more harvesting on them. But one thing I'm really excited is this in here. If you can see these green plants coming up the center here, these are my Rubecchia, which I started from seed last fall and planted in the garden and have overwintered. So I believe this is Sahara and maybe Prairie Sun, I believe. So I'm really excited. These stalks mean blooms. And actually you can see some of the blooms starting to come up in them. Really excited about those coming back from what I started from seed. Now, also right behind you, and we just got to point out if y'all saw my end of the summer stuff uh, or my um, end of spring into summer tours last year, you know that these beds, even though I planted them up, were like almost bare. And so I'm just thrilled by how lush and full everything is. These right here are straw flowers that are coming up, and you can see tons and tons and tons of stalks coming up right here. I'm really excited about beginning to harvest those as well. Now behind it, let me walk around, is the bronze leaf fennel. And it is actually getting pretty much decimated at this point because it is absolutely covered in swallowtail uh, caterpillars. <laughs> they are insane, they are massive, and they are giant. Let me take the phone from you, Jeff, and show them. Okay, so let me get some close-ups of these guys. They are happy as can be, and they have decimated these fennel plants. Now, the fennel is a perennial for me. I'm not worried about it. It will absolutely grow back. 
You can even see some of the chrysalis. There's a chrysalis right there. Okay, there's the chrysalis right there. Looking good. But yeah, all these guys, they are going crazy on here. Here's a bunch more over here. They are happy, and all of these will be swallowtail um, butterflies. But I'm not worried about the fennel. I mean, you can see it's got a really strong system down there. It's going to be fine. And I think I have like three fennel plants in this area. Yeah, that looks about right. But bronze leaf fennel is actually really great to utilize in cut flowers, as well, cut flower arrangements as well. And it smells absolutely amazing. It smells like a really kind of lighter version of licorice. Now, while I have the phone, <laughs> I'm going to show you guys a few things back here. Now, these right here, if you remember, I was so excited about growing Starfire Marigolds last year. Petite, tiny, sweet little marigolds. And these guys have reseeded themselves. They were a disaster last year, but apparently not so much of a disaster that they didn't drop a few seeds. So I'm really excited to have those. And I also have two dahlia tubers that decided to come back this whole bed used to be dahlia tubers and it was a massive fail i was out hundreds of dollars very disappointing it did have two come back this particular variety is ova joy and um i think it was ova joy or ova joe somewhere on that i've already harvested one i'll put up a picture of what it looks like i've also had some volunteer zinnias coming up look at this beautiful bright orange beautiful and then this pink one over here so fun but also in this bed all of these kind of lacy leaves right here these are all delphinium coming up that i started from seed all of these kind of like chive looking situation over here these are all drumstick allium which will be coming up i also have scabiosa plants right there and lots of status um, status i all started by uh, seed this spring and there I actually should say this late winter and they are all coming up and starting to bloom they are looking really really good I'm excited about the amount of status I'm going to have this year I also have this lily it's called elode it is supposed to be a double lily um, it's not but <laughs> on the package it said it was it's still really pretty I have enjoyed having them in the arrangements Okay, Jeff's over there <laughs> in the in, <laughs> in the willow. I've actually trimmed it back. It actually used to come down a whole bunch there. I've trimmed it back a little bit, but I need to do a much more massive trim where basically I would trim everything below Jeff's head back there. And so you would actually be able to see through. I'll do that project another time. I feel like I always have so many projects, but I can never get to everything. I did want to show you over here some of those drumstick alliums i have some coming up this over here and these are such fun plants and these are little bulbs and they are so fun now they smell straight up onion but they're really fun for arrangements i really like to look at them like covered in this paper right before they bloom these are super fun and they're very long lasting in the garden what do you think of those caterpillars you didn't know they were back here did you it's crazy, right? I think that guy's working on a chrysalis or something. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay, so here we are on the back porch. This back porch has become a, such a calm, peaceful area for me. I really did a lot of work, kind of straightening it up, and really creating several things that I really enjoyed growing this year. I've got a lot of my pepper plants along here. I've got several of my orange hat tomatoes, which are doing beautifully. I've got a couple of succulent and cactus arrangements, and then I've worked really hard on the hanging baskets. Everything's looking good on here, and I've managed to stay organized for almost four weeks in this area. So I'm super proud of myself because you guys have seen, I usually just dump everything on the porch, but I've kind of finally gotten it to the point where I love it so much that I don't want to mess it up. So I have been cleaning up my messes, which is really good. So a couple of things I want to show you guys, one of my tips for vacationing. So right here, you're going to see all these seedlings and plants in this cart. And I'm sorry, I'm walking behind you. The mama bird and the dad bird are behind you. You want to turn around and show them? They're on the top of the fence. So we actually have some baby birds in one of the hanging baskets and that they're morning doves. 
um, one of you guys told me when I showed you, and this is the mama bird and the daddy bird watching us. Um, if you look at them, they turn around um, so that you can't see them. But if Jeff turns back around, they will face him back again, which is so funny. But I think it's a defense mechanism. But back to the vacationing. This is one of the ways, like, we're going to be leaving for a while. My parents are going to be taking care of our kids and taking care of the garden. And so plants that have to be watered on a daily basis, I put them here in the cart instead of spread out throughout the entire garden. Most of the garden is set up for drip, which is great, fine and dandy. But I do put these right here so that when the time comes for them to water them, they know where everything is. It's all in one place. So it makes it a lot easier. So that's just a little tip if you are leaving for a vacation. Now, I do want Jeff to come over here because I want to show off the orange hot tomatoes which are doing beautifully they are in these terracotta pots all down low and I'm really happy with them now they have struggled with some spider mites so I have been trying to treat them but you all know how I am I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time treating and it kind of is what it is so I do hope that they'll work through the spider mites and kind of push forward now I am going to get Jeff to come over here and show you guys one of the hanging baskets and he's going to come over here and kind of lift up the phone so that you guys can see the baby birds up in there. You see them back in there? I see it. There they are. So those are the two baby birds hanging out and that's who the mama and daddy are watching us, <laughs> making sure that we are staying away from them. Okay, so a couple of years ago, I planted kind of a hydrangea, a potted hydrangea garden. They didn't do so much the first year, but they are doing great this year and starting to put on some beautiful blooms. Not really familiar with whatever particular, sorry, I'm distracted by the bird is down there, <laughs> with for whatever particular varieties they are. They are those hydrangeas that you buy at the store during Mother's Day. And so it was really an experiment. I got them on clearance to see how they do, and they've done well. And now another one is going to be blooming. This is kind of a white green. This is like a beautiful kind of pinkish red. One of them was supposed to be a blue. We'll see. But they are doing really well at this point in time. Okay, if y'all remember, I started growing those petunias from seed. This is a Triumph mix. And I seriously, I don't think it gets justice. These are gorgeous. They are huge. They are frilly. They're absolutely beautiful. I'm going to be growing them every year. And they are wild. Look how big this is in the basket. So that was a Triumph mix. And then I believe this other one was called Bridal Veil. Vale. Look at the edges of those petunias absolutely beautiful I'm so pleased so these hanging baskets ooh, so these hanging baskets are looking really fun they're wonky they're different they're fun I'm really enjoying them got another one over here and this shows a little bit more of a color a different color look at those so fun and then you can see the Snow Princess Alyssum. Okay, so I wanted to see you all to see some of the updates of the trio of planting. Um, if you recall, these topiaries were Christmas ornaments that I found on the side of the um, road. They were covered in light to so use them out in your front yard. So I did add a blueberry ice bougainvillea, which is doing beautiful, and a couple of varieties of um, planters in here with petunias and verbena and creeping jenny and chocolate cosmos. They're all doing beautifully. These are all hooked up to drips, so they're doing quite lovely. Now, let's go ahead and shift all the way over this way. And here's the other set of three that I did. And in here, I did the star jasmine, um, which is climbing the topiary really beautifully and starting to put on lots of buds. So it should be blooming pretty soon. And then it is accented with coordinating um, plants that match that other trio. This set is also set up on drip. It's doing lovely as well. I'm really pleased with it. Now, if Jeff pans down to the empty bed in front of him, 
I recently removed all of the ranunculus corms that were here and I back planted with pro cut sunflowers and we actually have a few little seedlings already coming up which is so exciting and that was really my goal I wanted to before I left for my vacation to really do a lot of work like seeding work that type of thing so that when I came back I really had stuff being produced within the garden while I was gone What's up, dude? Mm, I also watch TV. Yes, you are. Uh... Okay, so one thing I'm super excited about is these plants that don't look like much back here. These are Lizzie Anthas. They're also known as something bells, Texas bell, Texas bluebells, Texas bluebells. And Lizzie Anthas can be grown as a perennial in my area. In the past, I've tried to start them from seed and had very slim success. And so some of these I grew from seed a couple of years ago, but I also purchased some starts from Covington's over in Rockwell, Rockwell, Rella, that sound right? Anyway, in the Covington's in that area, Covington's currently has them out. So if you want to grow these as a perennial cut flower, now is the time to go grab them. They're a little pricey for a little four inch pot, but they are worth it. And these overwintered beautifully. And when they start blooming, y'all, these are gonna be gorgeous. I cannot tell you how strong, beautiful these stems are. Each of the plant is giving me a dozen stems of these flowers. It's gonna be super fun and can't wait to share those with you. Now panning over, you can see that most of the snapdragons are pretty much done for the season. Um, a lot of them I've just cut back, cleaned up. They will continue to produce a little bit through the hot weather and then they will basically rebound in the fall. Pretty much the most um, dominant or, or most prolific one I've grown this year is the ivory madam butterfly. Let me get Jeff to come in a little closer because these blooms are just to die for gorgeous. They're lacy, they're beautiful, just absolutely beautiful, elegant blooms. Now, I started these last year and they overwintered in these beds, and I am hoping to do the same thing again this year and keep these plants going year after year because I've been so thrilled with this early production of snap snapdragons and how much I've enjoyed them. Now coming back this area, these tall plants right here are uh, Fata Morgana scabiosa um, and they are getting ready to bloom and these are beautiful kind of like peachy neutral color which will be really fun. Behind it is sweet, la uh, sweet rocket lavender. This plant is driving me friggin' insane. Jeff will come over here. Now, this is a biennial, so I've already grown this for a full year, and I'm finally getting flowers, only to see that it is covered with aphids, just an infestation of aphids, and I just... I don't know, y'all. I did all of that, had to watch it for so long, only to have blooms just covered in aphids. And this is not a small aphid infestation. I mean, look at this stem back here is just covered so truthfully when i get back from vacation i'm pretty sure all of these are coming up i'm just i can't do it anymore it's too much i guess i could leave them and allow them to continue to work as a trap crop and a trap crop is a particular plant that draws all the insects to it so that perhaps they don't bother the other ones i don't know you guys tell me your opinion if you've grown sweet rocket before um, I was really looking forward to the flowers, but now I, I can't really, I can't cut these and bring them in. They're just covered. And so should I dig them up or should I leave them here as a trap crop? I'll be interested to see what you all say. So it's amazing. I'm in my garden every day for multiple hours, right? And it's not until I sit here and do a garden tour that I actually start discovering a lot. Like I didn't realize how intense some of the spider mites already were in my garden. I'm kind of a little disappointed because we've had so much rain 
So really it's been quite moist. So a lot of these spider mites should not be hanging around. They typically like really dry, hot weather. And that's not been the situation this spring. So I'm a little disappointed. This particular climbing rose has been struggling with spider mites. I might just give it a really strong cutback is what I'm kind of thinking. Um, just so it's easier to deal with the spider mites. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet. And then I also have this snowball viburnum back here. And you can tell by its leaves, it is also dealing with spider mites as well. Now in front of it, I have all of my heirloom chrysanthemums, which have probably doubled if not tripled in size since you guys last saw them. I've also run drip to each of the, the base of each of the individual plants. And these were my big replacements for dahlias. Now they're not producing blooms right now and I'm not really wanting them to produce blooms. I really want them to focus on roots right now but they've already done so well in this bed. I'm already getting excited for fall and the production we're going to see. Um, this is going to be so fun to show you guys and I hope that you guys will invest in some heirloom chrysanthemum in your garden because I think you're going to be shocked at how awesome these are for cut flower arrangements. What are you doing? I had this itch on my back. Okay, so here we are at the very back of the backyard garden. Right here we have, um, I think this is gold mine, a yarrow. I don't see a label. What is this? moonshine moonshine yarrow um, which is a perennial in my area this all I'm going to be harvesting it I kind of left everything up until after we did our garden tour but I'm much most of this will be harvested very soon I've also got some gherkin cucumbers going up here they're not doing super great I wondered if they were dealing with um if they were also dealing with spider mites but I don't see that now I did plant some of my dianthus that I've grown from seed. I did plant them in some containers. I didn't really do a video on that, but I do have those growing and these will be great for cut flowers. These cucumbers over here are doing beautifully. These are straight eight cucumbers and they are climbing beautifully, doing well. I don't see any fruit that's being set yet, but hopefully that'll be soon. And you can also see that the lantana is starting to get bigger and starting to work its way over the side. Now my clematis is pretty much done blooming, but over here I've had some luck with the chocolate, let's see, this is the chocolate blue indigo um, tomatoes over here, and Jeff will come up and give you guys a close up because these are really pretty. Um, they're really kind of blue color. But I think that these plants are actually diseased because their leaves have continued to just fall off and not look very good. So I've kind of just been pulling them off as they go. Um, they don't look great. So I don't know how much fruit I'm actually going to get off of these. I did grow these from seeds. So far I've gotten five tomatoes. Not great. <laughs> <laughs> but let me cross over here. Now this guy is looking good. This is a beauty berry bush. It's putting on lots of these beautiful, delicate purple lavender blooms. All of these blooms will be berries in the fall. So I'm so excited. There'll be lavender berries all the way across this. Cannot wait to utilize these for cut flower arrangements. It's going to be gorgeous. Now, I will definitely end up doing some pruning at the end of the season. I'm just letting it go for now, but we will prune this a little tighter at the end of the fall going into winter so that this guy doesn't get so massive. Okay, so at the last tour, I asked you all about this oh so easy urban legend rose by proven winner and whether or not you all thought that these random branches were RR disease or red rosette or rose rosette disease and which is very prominent in our area. And the consensus was no, y'all don't think it is at, at all. And they are producing a lot of blooms. The leaves do not look, you know, unusual. They're not shaped weird. They're not curly. They don't look gnarly or anything like that. It's just a really highly thorny bush. But so far, everybody's thinking, no, we're fine. 
I am surprised at the height because you can see me sitting beside this. This is up to five feet. The shrub, um, you know, that's a little bigger than I thought it was going to be. But we're going to let it do its thing this season and then I'll start to prune it to the way I want it in the future. Now, all the gladiola and iris blooms that I planted a couple months ago are coming up and absolutely beautiful. All of my hyacinth beans over here, and let me get Jeff to give you a close up of these leaves because they're so pretty. They have the prettiest veining because all their veining is purple. But the hyacinth beans these are um, ruby moon is the variety they're going really good and they will be trained up this trellis and grow all the way over they'll be absolutely gorgeous now I'm really happy with all of my hypericum berries or St. John's wort. So I have two varieties here. One is Chardonnay and one is Pinot, I believe, Pinot Noir. And so this one has yellow berries and this one has kind of a pinkish berry. Basically the way the shrub works is it produces a flower and then the petals of the flower fall away and they leave a berry. So let me show you what that looks like. So right here you can see the little yellow flower and in the center it produces a berry and then the leaves are the petals fall away and we get left with just berries. So when a branch is ready to be harvested for a floral arrangement, it looks like this. So it just has all these sweet little berries. Looks really good. This is my third year with these plants and I feel like this is the first year that they are producing berries and foliage that it's pretty enough to cut and use. And I think it's because I have given them a really tough pruning. And then I've also been feeding them a lot of Dr. Iron. They've been kind of struggling um, with lack of iron. But they are doing really pretty. And I'm really excited to kind of harvest some of these and bring them in. And then you can see more gladiolas and iris going up over here, which is doing really nice. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed today's part two tour of the backyard. It was fun to kind of take a little bit more time, talk about different varieties when I'm growing and show you more about what's going on in the backyard. Of course, the centerpiece of my entire backyard is the willow tree. I absolutely love it. I look at it every day and enjoy it multiple times. I love when it catches in the wind. It's so fun. And I highly encourage you all, if you're planting a garden, to start with some kind of centerpiece beautiful thing that you're going to love and enjoy over the years. All right, you all, I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when my latest videos are up. And make sure you check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. As always, she's a mad gardener or a decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.